That's new. I like the tally lamp. Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the camera store today. And we are talking about the much anticipated long awaited Panasonic Lumix GH6. The Panasonic Lumix GH6 is a much anticipated camera. It features a brand new sensor and a brand new processor and a host of new video features that we're excited to get into. And of course, we're particularly excited because we've been shooting with the Panasonic GH5 for many, many moons. We've been shooting a lot of TCS TV for it. Even before we were hosting TCS TV, Jordan and Chris were using it on the channel. And so we're excited to see all of the upgrades that they've put into it, the refinements, because Truth be told, the GH5 has been an excellent workhorse camera for us. We've put it through a ton of abuse over the years, and yeah. it's held up. It's held up really well for us, and producing excellent results still to this day. Yeah, and we always get comments in the videos that we produce saying like, which camera was that shot on? And most of the time it's been on the GH5, <laughs> and we just love it because it's so portable. It's easy to rig up. We like how audio integrates into it, and it's just a really solid camera. So later on, we're gonna bring on our videographer, Drew Crawford, talk to him about what he's most excited about and then Dave and I are also going to cover some of the features and things that we like with our hands-on experience of a pre-production Panasonic Lumix GH6. I love getting a brand new camera in my hands and with the Panasonic GH6 there's three things that really stood out for me. One, we have a brand new sensor. I'm always excited to get a new sensor in a camera because it means improved image quality and high ISO capability. We have a brand new 25 megapixel backside illuminated sensor with dual gain. We have significantly better high ISO performance than we were getting with the Panasonic GH5. I love that because it makes the camera that much more versatile. The other thing we have is it's paired with a new Venus engine which promises two times the performance we're getting from the GH5. GH5 as far as processing speed. Now immediately what pops out for me too is the cooling unit on the back here. This is the force cooling unit which promises to keep the camera much cooler when it's running those higher frame rates. Now the GH6 is a very video centric camera but I want to talk to you a bit more about the still side of things. Now we had the opportunity to go meet a guy named Trevor who runs Pasca Fresco YNYC and he makes these amazing homemade passes. He's become my new best friend. So we had a great chance to shoot while he was making some of this stuff with the brand new Panasonic GH6 and I was really impressed with the quality of files I was getting out of it. The skin tones were very very good. Definitely a much improvement over the GH5 and I love the level of detail. Now we paired it up with some very good quality optics of course as well but it still gave me some great colors, some great dynamic range. I was really impressed with a micro four thirds sensor. I feel like Panasonic has done a fantastic job of integrating this brand new sensor and new profiles. Everything with this camera seems to be producing some excellent results that are certainly more refined than we were getting with the GH5. I'm quite happy to use this camera on a stills perspective, but the whole experience of photographing with its face and eye detection is improved. With that new processor, everything is a much more enjoyable experience to work with. So I'm pleasantly surprised with how good and how much I'm enjoying using this camera from a Still's perspective, especially since I'm like a full frame snob. Another really trick feature I like about this camera, and it's accessible right through this dial right here, is their 100 megapixel handheld high res mode. So it's only 25 megapixels, how does it do it? Basically it takes that image sensor and it shifts it one pixel at a time, but the stabilization is so effective on this camera that you can do it handheld. It takes eight images, stacks them all together, giving that 25 megapixel sensor a huge boost to 100 megapixels, and the level of detail is amazing. Think landscape or art reproduction, things like that where you want the ultimate detail. This is a fantastic feature to have. When it comes to shooting sports in action, I haven't really thought personally Panasonic is my first choice. It's okay, it's eight frames per second when I'm doing continuous, but with this GH6 with the improved processor and the faster readout speed of the sensor, we can achieve up to 75 frames per second. Is it 75 frames per second? Yeah. 75 frames per second. ASS. 75 frames per second. ASS. This is insane. So it certainly has its application, but as a sports shooter, think about trap shooting. You pre-focus on your subject, wait for them to hit that mark, and then fire 75 frames. You have a ton to choose from. So I think it's gonna find the right application, but it's a very trick little feature to have that makes this camera just that much more valuable. Evan, in the past I've said that Panasonic don't make the sexiest cameras. And I, uh, 
I have to say they've made some strides. They're certainly getting better. The red accents are certainly lovely on the different record buttons here. They make them very functional. They work really well. They have stepped up their oh, game on this one. Dave, come on. <laughs> they have made a very nice improvement. I think this is a hell of a lot sexier than the GH5. They've added more of the stylings that we're seeing in the S series lineup. I love the red accents. And I think that it's extremely well laid out. It has a great deep grip. Everything's well laid out in terms of the dial and the button placement. I think everything feels really dirty durable, rugged, and that's because it is. You have great weather ceiling, amazing durability, and the fact that they've added a cooling system to the camera without really adding that much bulk and weight, as well as having the tally, tally lamp. lamp. That we don't is. have to talk to Drew anymore because we just know it's recording. You should be like, are you recording? Are you rolling? Yeah, no, it is such a, a tiny little thing that makes the whole being in front of the camera such a big improvement. Yes, and they have thought of a lot of other small details yes. that make this a video powerhouse and it's sometimes the little things that make the biggest difference so one of them i like is that they include a cable lock in the box of the camera and that's to help organize your cables and that they design the fully articulating screen and so that they don't get in the way of each other the one thing that we would like to see though is the screen itself is the same as the gh5 and I do sometimes find that it's a little bit dark, depending on the angle that you're looking at it. Sometimes it's a little hard to see in certain lighting situations. Yeah, we also have the same viewfinder as we found on the GH5. So the 3.68 million dot resolution viewfinder, it's not bad, no. but it's, you know, I think they could have stretched a little bit further. Could have stepped it up. After all this time, <laughs> Panasonic, it was really good when it came out with the GH5. But now, of course, we're seeing much better panels. The last thing I want to talk about with the design of the camera is it does have dual card slots, although for the first time in a GH series, we have a CF Express card slot. Now, usually I kind of go off on a tangent and a rant about having the same kind of card slots because I only need to carry one kind of media. But in this case, I don't mind so much, and I think it lends itself the way Panasonic has the whole philosophy of making it a very, very flexible camera. Yeah, and of course, it depends on what you're shooting and when you're doing some of those higher frame rate video features then you're going to need that faster card but otherwise you can rely on the other media that you have before it lends itself well to the panasonic lineup in the past making it a very flexible tool for video production of course that's what we're going to get into next we're going to bring drew on camera we're going to talk a lot about the video features that he's most excited about all right, so I brought Drew Crawford in front of the camera today. He's normally working behind the camera for a TCS TV show as well as the live show, but today he's in front because we're gonna talk about the GH6 and how it compares to the GH5, which has been his main tool as well as the TCS TV main camera for many years now. Even outside of TCS TV, I've been using the GH5 for my personal work. So, you know, short form documentaries, a little bit of film work from school and stuff like that. So. Yeah, we, we put it through its paces, to say the least. Well, and before we get into the GH6, let's just talk about why you think the GH5 has been such a popular tool for a variety of filmmakers. I mean, right off the bat, it, when it first came out, it did take a couple of firmware updates to really kind of hit its stride. So, you know, it took a little bit, but eventually when they finally had the final iteration of, of the what camera, it is today. of what it is, it was just a powerhouse, 4K60. I mean, we have to go back in time, but you know, five years back, that was huge. That's Most cameras deal. were only shooting 4K 30. So having that along with the 180 frames per second variable frame rate, those things were just absolutely monsters in terms of content creation. The other thing that I'll mention is that um, I know with Jordan in particular, and I'm sure you can attest to this, is having all of the video assist tools. So you have things like focus peaking, vector scopes, waveforms, a lot of those kind of tools that aren't in a lot of the other mirrorless cameras. Um, they're starting to creep up a little bit more, um, but you know, the GH series has always been designed as that specialized video tool. Yeah, and it was just small, compact, easy to run with. There definitely is a few things that have... That have been perfected in the GH6. Very much so. When Chris and Jordan first started, they were using like fives. Like video like cameras. Big cinema cams. They are unwieldy. Normally you have to have them rigged up. And so having this kind of run and gun capabilities is honestly been a game changer for a lot of content creators. Another thing that we really liked about the GH series for many years is the audio integration. I mean, we're always using multiple lab microphones. We love that Panasonic has their, their integrated XLR adapter that you can use, or, you know, a lot of the more modern compact microphone systems, like the Rode... Uh, Wireless Go 2s yes. that we're using. Yep. Yes, they work so seamlessly with the GH series. Um, and uh, we love that the new camera has four channel audio options. Yeah actually getting into a lot of the things that the GH6 brings to the table. The four channel audio is definitely a nice bit. 
To be honest, the integration isn't exactly what most people would be hoping for with four individual channels, but honestly, to get that, you would have to have like a full mix board integrated into this system. Uh, I don't think anyone really wants pots like on the bottom of their camera or anything, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, and the one constant, of course, is that we always get so many compliments on how good the GH5 footage looks. And of course, we want to know, do you think the GH6 is a good enough upgrade? Are you excited about all of these features? Um, what was your first reaction? First reaction was just, holy crap, 240 frames per second, 5.7K, 4 or 10 bit Apple ProRes internal recording. That was a huge one. Uh, but then the 240 frames per second and the 300 frames per second, that was also big. And what was it, the, the page of the different codecs available? There's little pages <laughs> worth of codecs. It's ridiculous. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in this camera, more so than even the GH5 camera. Um, what were some of the physical upgrades uh, that you think really set this apart from the GH5? Well, obviously the cooling system. That combined with the magnesium body is essentially giving it unlimited record time on every single codec and frame rate which is absurd. Yes, and of course, when we were shooting today um, and when we have been playing around with the pre-production samples, we were seeing that the autofocus has also improved significantly for video. Uh, what were you seeing there? Well, they claim three times faster. I was noticing a lot more active, especially with the eye tracking. Uh, is it usable? It's usable. Okay. With the GH5, I wouldn't necessarily say it's not usable, but I've predominantly been using manual focus. Mm -hmm. With this, uh, I had a lot more confidence with it. It was tracking at least one of you, keeping them in focus really well. Now we talked about how a lot of people complimented the look of the GH5 footage. Do you think that the, the quality has been refined with the new sensor and uh, having a dual gain sensor? I would say yes, especially the higher ISO performance. That has been a, I don't want to say a big problem with the GH5 because with these lenses, the 1.7 lenses that we've been predominantly using, or even the Sigma 18 to 35, ISO has kind of been mitigated in the most part. Generally, I'm able to shoot about 800 ISO at the top end, which is totally fine for noise. The problem is with GH5, you can't go above 6400 ISO ever. And even 6400, like if you're punching in 15% or anything like that, you'll notice the grain. You'll notice the edges being softened pretty harshly. So the GH6, massive improvement there. Another thing that we like about the GH5 is just the form factor overall. I mean, they've been great to, to video users having a full size HDMI port. Uh, that's been big. I mean, a lot of the other companies haven't seemed to integrate that. Still and so apply. is that enough of a reason to choose maybe a GH series camera over some of the other mirrorless options? Well, there's a lot of reasons to choose a GH series, not just because, you know, this is a huge amount of power in the palm of your hand, but also just because with the integration of full V-Log as opposed to V-Log L, there's like 12 stops of dynamic range, 13 and a half with the high dynamic range mode, 240 frames. The list just keeps going <laughs> on and on and blah, on. Blah, blah. <laughs> they also integrated Cube LUTs, which was, uh, you know, it's not a huge thing, but for anyone who's shooting predominantly with a specific LUT, we don't necessarily do that, but for anyone else, the fact that you can now view it, I wish they had a slightly better screen for viewing that, but. <laughs> yes, yeah, David and I were talking about the screen, that it would be nice to see that upgraded. Uh, another feature that we should touch on, which isn't necessarily a new thing, is having great in-body image stabilization. Of course, this is their five axis system, and when it's paired with a lot of the Lumix lenses, you're getting up to seven and a half stops of image stabilization, which means you truly can do a lot of your work handheld. You can. I'm noticing, at least from the, from the kind of movements that we're doing, especially side to side and up and down, there's a lot more fluid motion. There's not as much jerkiness with the vertical motions. So I hate to use the term gimbal look, but it, <laughs> it really does. Smooth. It is incredibly smooth. It's, it's shocking, actually, uh, how, how smooth the handheld footage can be, even when you're doing some of those kind of long form multi-step uh, the, takes. The video lenses. <laughs> very familiar with those. <laughs> well, Drew, it sounds like you're pretty convinced. You probably want a GH6 in your kit, like I know some other people are asking for. Is there anything else that you think video creators should know about? Uh, only that they're going to have to get in line behind me to get their hands on it. Well, Drew, it's great bringing you in front of the camera, talking about some of the features that video content creators are going to love, some of the things that they might miss with this camera. Um, and now you can, you can go back to what you do. I shall. Thank you. Ev, I think Panasonic has done a fantastic job with this GH6. I mean, every spec you read on this camera, you're like, oh, great, they've improved this. They've got a brand new sensor. They've got a brand new processor. They've got 
video functionality like crazy. So I think they've done a fantastic job with this. Yeah, and I think just from the practical standpoint of having a very reliable video tool, again, it's maintaining that micro four thirds kind of compact body size, but packing a ton of camera into it. You have that in-body image stabilization that we've come to love. And we obviously love the GH5 before, it was such a workhorse for us. And so I think it's worth the upgrade to getting the GH6. I could see this going into our kit and using the two cameras actually in tandem. I mean, it's also nice to see Panasonic has, you know, brought out lenses like this 10 to 25 yeah. 17. It really shows a testament that they are dedicated to the Micro Four Thirds market. Yeah, and I'd say Micro Four Thirds, like it's going to keep going, and especially on the video side of things, they've made some huge strides, and it's great to see the capability and flexibility that they've added to this camera system. Of course, we want to know, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on the GH6? Is it something that you'd consider upgrading to, whether you own a GH5 or maybe something else? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. You know, you know, kudos to them, they are improving and uh, maybe their next camera will be on the top 10 sexy cameras list. Ability, of course, just having that four bit, or four bit. <laughs> four bit color. Four bit. Top of the line. Ribbit. <laughs> now, if you enjoyed this episode, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out our more recent episodes, click up here. And if you're a Canadian, you want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.